I'm Dr. Alejandro Hoberman. I'm here with Dr. Nader Sheikh. We're both from the Division of General Academic Pediatrics at Children's Hospital. And we'll be telling you today about the new American Academy of Pediatrics Urinary Tract Infection Guideline and about new urinary tract infection research studies that we're currently conducting. So with the first febrile urinary tract infection in a child, what we do know is that 65% of them have acute pyelonephritis, 15% of them develop renal scarring. Scarring has been linked to preeclampsia, hypertension, and end-stage renal disease. About a third, 35%, have vesicle ureteral reflux, which increases the risk for scarring. But we also know that it's not necessary nor sufficient for scarring to occur. That prompt antibiotic treatment helps but does not prevent scarring. We know the efficacy of prophylactic antibiotics is currently under study as part of the randomized intervention for vesicle ureteral reflux study. And in a small study in Taiwan that included only 19 children that were randomized to steroids and 65 children to placebo, steroids resulted in a 50% reduction of renal scarring in high-risk children. What we don't know is whether anti-inflammatory medications reduce the likelihood of renal scarring whether non-invasive biomarkers can identify children at high risk for renal scarring, and whether the duration of antibiotic treatment for UTI can be shortened, and if so, what is the impact on bacterial resistance? So to summarize the new American of Academy of Pediatrics guidelines, the recommendation is mostly to obtain both urinalysis and urine culture on catheterized urine specimens, not a bag collected urine specimen, in girls with two risk factors, boys with three risk factors, or uncircumcised boys. The risk factors include white race, age less than 12 months, temperature greater than or equal to 39 degrees centigrade, fever greater than or equal to 48 hours, and the absence of another source of fever. The guideline defines UTI as pyuria and bacteriuria. The recommendation is to treat orally with 7 to 14 days of antibiotics unless the child is toxic, unable to retain oral treatment to obtain an ultrasound after the first UTI, and if abnormal, hydronephrosis, scarring, or obstruction, obtain a voiding sister urethrogram, and obtain a voiding sister urethrogram after a second urinary tract infection, and then continue to obtain urine specimens with subsequent febrile illnesses. So what's our opinion of these guidelines? Well, the guidelines represent a significant paradigm shift. We went from no child left unimaged to no child imaged. And this change was based on a small number of studies. Overall, the studies had limited power to detect clinically significant differences, particularly with children with grade threes and three and four vesicoureteral reflux. Many of the studies were unblinded. Some had non-stringent criteria for defining a UTI, which along with, it, with the lack of blinding could have led to some misclassification bias. The children really weren't representative of a U.S. population. There were many uncircumcised boys and many bag urines. So some of these uh, ga remaining gaps in knowledge will be addressed by the River Study, and perhaps that will uh, help us develop an individualized approach to the UTI management of UTI. So to summarize, in the old paradigm, children with uh, urinary tract infection would undergo voiding cyst avoiding cystourethrogram, and those with vesicoureteral reflux would undergo further treatment. In the new paradigm, children are not tested until the second UTI except for an ultrasound. And perhaps we don't have to choose between imaging everybody and not imaging everybody. Perhaps we can measure a biomarker level at the time of diagnosis to help us decide which children should be followed more aggressively. So our current, uh, current approach to imaging is to follow the AAP urinary tract infection guidelines. We obtain an ultrasound with the first UTI and avoiding cystourethrogram with the second. For practices in the Pittsburgh area, please consider referring to the CHP UTI Center. We can help you develop an individualized imaging plan for high-risk children, such as children with non-E. coli urinary tract infection, those with a strong family history of vesicoureteral reflux or genital urinary anomalies, and males under six months of age. Most importantly, by doing so, you will help us develop high-quality evidence. So let me tell you about the three studies we have currently ongoing. The first is the SCOUT study. This is uh, comparing short course and with standard course therapy for children with the urinary tract infection. This is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study. Uh, 746 children aged 2 months to 10 years of age will be enrolled in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. 
children with a UTI who are improving after the, the first few days and are afebrile can then be randomized. They will either be randomized to reduce duration of treatment, which is five days of antibiotics plus five days of placebo, or standard durations, 10 days of antibiotics. The primary outcome is treatment failure, and secondary outcomes are likelihood of recurrence and impact of antimicrobial resistance. The biomarker study, uh, in, in that study we're trying to identify markers that can accurately differentiate pyelonephritis from cystitis. This is an observational study. 160 children, two months to 10 years of age will be enrolled at the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh and Children's National Medical Center. Children with a first UTI are eligible and in this study we will compare the biomarker levels, both urine and blood, with the DMSA scan done within the first 14 days. Finally, the STAR study, steroids to actively reduce renal scarring. This is another randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study. 390 children will be enrolled at four children's hospitals. And children with the first febrile UTI, aged three months to six years of age, will be eligible. They will receive dexamethasone or placebo for three days on top of the, their usual antibiotic course. And the outcome will be renal scarring on a six-month DMSA scan. So this Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh Urinary Tract Infection Treatment Center provides a unique interdisciplinary team approach with clinicians in the Division of General Academic Pediatrics, Urology, Radiology, and Nephrology. Call the 412 utis number and talk to one of us directly. We'll help provide evidence-based recommendations regarding diagnosis and management, arrange evaluation and treatment of children with bladder and bowel dysfunction, help design individualized imaging plan, arrange patient appointments with urologists or nephrologists as needed, and continue to develop high-quality evidence leading to outstanding patient care. So what do we need from you? Call the 412-692 UTIs at the time of the abnormal urinalysis. Patients will be enrolled at the emergency department at 11 pediatric pit net offices covered by research nurses or at the three primary care centers. They have to be enrolled before starting antibiotic treatment. A research staff member will be immediately available. And based on the recommendations on the guidelines, your contributions to previous studies have led to awareness of the high prevalence of the condition, the development of better diagnostic techniques, pediatric specific UTI criteria, outpatient treatment of febrile urinary tract infections, a reevaluation of imaging, and the current efficacy of antimicrobial prophylaxis for vesicoureteral reflux study, the RIVRO study. But most importantly, high quality care for all of our patients. And we believe that with these diagnostics, looking at biomarkers, treatment interventions, looking at corticosteroids, and duration of treatment will provide that. Thank you.